Welcome back to The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, the third. Last time, we completed the two doors that were in the Fake Glorious, and this time, we're running circles around Olivier and Shara's drinking contest. No, actually, I'm back in the garden, and to get the party that I'll be using for this next fight, which sadly won't be Estelle and Reese, even though they, they do work pretty well in this fight. So, I'm going to get the obvious choice out of the way first, I'm going to be using Ren here. Because it's just, you know, it just makes sense to fight the other three Enforcers we fought in the Sky Arc with the last of the Enforcers from the Sky Arc. So now we've basically got five Enforcers in this. Well, Joshua's no longer an Enforcer, but still, you get the idea. And as for the last slot, well... Not only is Tita incredibly overpowered, but I kind of want Tita to get some revenge against Valta for uh, the incredibly graphic uh, imagery that he told her about in Sky SC's second chapter, and just how much he brutalized Zeiss. And also, we get a Tita and Ren tag team against Ouroboros, which is pretty great. Uh, and if I summon part of Mata, we're going to have two mechs. So, in terms of our equipment and our stats, I've got, um... Yeah, previously I had the Lunar Seal on Kevin instead of the Solar Seal. I'm pretty sure that was a mistake and it should have been the Solar Seal. Joshua has the Super Gladiator Headband and the Lunar Seal. So now, something interesting is that now that we have two Super Gladiator Headbands, these do not stack with each other. But they do stack with a regular Gladiator Headband, or a Lunar Seal, which is actually just a reskin Gladiator headband. So, as long as it's a different item, then they stack. But if it's the exact same one, they don't. So, Josh was pretty much pure CP right now. But at the same time, I've got him with both the Ruby Gem and the Sapphire Gem. Could give him the Emerald Gem to go for the full um, Pokemon Gen 3 trifecta, but... No, mainly because I want to have both physical attacks and Cyclone Napalm for this, and the Topaz gem means that he'll be able to use Earth Wall in a pinch as well. As for Tita, I found out recently that annoyingly, uh, when she loses the effects of all of her Quartz besides the stat boosts, this includes the crit bonus from Strike, which... That is incredibly frustrating. I would have liked a Tito who could crit in mech form, but no. So yeah, I just had to, like, like this slot is really doing nothing, but there's really nothing else I can put there. I mean, I, cause yeah, she'll lose the effects of all of these and these. And EP Cart makes no sense because she can't use arts in her orbital gear mode. So yeah, there's really not much that she can really do with that slot. But in terms of equipment, I've done something interesting. I've given Tita the Knight Armor, because her defense is going to get buffed by her Orbital Gear as well as her Strength. Now, I could also go all in on Strength and give her the Yugged Armor, but I'm going to go for the Knight Armor just to see how tanky I can make her. As well as uh, the Tiger Heart and the Divine Blades Emblem, because again, the only things that matter for Tita are things that actually raise stats. Uh, she also, yeah, this means that her Arts Defense is going to be absolutely pathetic due to the Knight Armor. Even, even using Arts Defense boosting Quartz will not save her from this. It will not pull her Arts Defense above 1, which is, yeah, that just goes to show how much of a penalty this is. And minus 5 speed, but, um... Minus one move is actually still kind of a pain, but I mean, it shouldn't be that bad, really. I'll, I'll mess around with tactics later, actually, because uh, I want to show off Ren. So, Ren, she has Gargan armor, heat resistant boots. Uh, I mean, I could go for the kitty suit if I wanted to be really cheesy, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I feel like that's a bit too mean. Uh, and Crest Charm plus Crimson Eye, just for all of the ATS boost she can get, and in terms of her augment, uh, oh, Action 4, not Onyx Gem, why do I not have an Onyx Gem on her? Uh, I actually don't have enough Onyx Gems? Huh. I suppose out of everyone here, Joshua's speed is overkill, so I'd rather give Ren the Onyx Gem. There we go, she has exactly 100 now. In terms of her Orbman setup, I, if I gave her the Sapphire Gem, she would have completely overkill ATS, but what I want on Ren is Calamitous Blast uh, because, yeah, to lower the Arts Defense of everything. And on Kevin, she also has Cyclone Napalm, 
On Kevin, I simply swapped the positions of the Time Gem and the Onyx Gem in his Orbman, and that meant that he keeps Gaia Shield, he keeps Zodiac, but he also gains Enfeeble, which I might want here because that stack with Tita is going to be hilarious. These bosses are not immune to stat debuffs, which is really good. And he also still keeps Calamitous Blast, Dark Matter EX, and uh, uh, Cyclone Napalm. Um, actually, no, he doesn't have Cyclone Napalm anymore because I... Uh, yeah, sometimes it, it gets a bit hard to juggle the quartz of everybody. Can I make another Cyclone Napalm? How much? Oh, I have way... Uh, yeah, I have way too many Seabeth. Um, reminds me of that one achievement in Sky um, FC where you actually had to carry a ridiculous amount of Seabeth at once. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and make myself another Ruby Gem. And can I actually make another Onyx Gem as well? Yeah, that gives us enough to cover a full party with both of those. Anybody's slots are... Uh, does anyone here have any slots that aren't fully open? Yeah, I kind of want to save the rest because later on, I will want to upgrade everybody to level 3 slot. Okay, so with that, Kevin can afford to take that, and Joshua can take an Onyx Gem, even though that's going to cut into his movement. Now, tactics. So for this fight... I am actually going to spread out. We will be dealing with some pretty uh, dangerous AoE attacks in this fight, and they love to waste your earth walls, so I'm going to want to do this and just use Gaia Shield for my guarding here. Okay, I think with that, I should be... Okay, no wait, not ready yet, because we're going to go with... Uh... Okay, like, Mueller is objectively kind of the best option here, but I am kind of tempted to go for Agate. The only downside will be minus 10 agility, which doesn't matter anyway. I'm going to go ahead and try that, actually. And give Mueller a bit of a, a, bit of a rest from being the designated remote ability guy. And now, finally, we can save and then head in. Open door, don't open. Now we want to open the door. And Weissman's ominous organ is playing, even though he, uh, he's actually not here. It would be pretty cool if he was, though. Fighting all of these enforcers and him would be amazing. Allow me to congratulate you on making it here. Haha, -ha, quite a surprise to reunite to reunite with you all in this way. Let me tell you, I'm not going to attempt to do Blue Bunk's voice from Cold Steel, even though I think it's perfect for his character. Fate is a splendidly peculiar thing, is it not? You sure know how to make a guy crack a smile. You came all this way just to give little old me a fight. Circumstances as they are, it is good to see you again. I figured you would be the ones waiting for us. So I get to fight you three, do I? I can barely wait to get started. The pleasure is all ours, we assure you. Indeed. Fighting both the Black Fang and the Angel of Slaughter at once is going to pose an interesting challenge. But I ain't one to back away from a tough fight. In fact, I crave them, so let's go! Tiki, I couldn't agree more. Ah, <sighs> there's no way we're walking away from this one. Probably no point in saying this, but take it easy on us, okay? As if you, of all people, need us going easy. Your game was up a long time ago, con man. I've heard many a rumour regarding the church's heretic hunter in the past, but I feared such rumours were almost downplayed after learning he had the strength to slay the faceless alone. You certainly did a flawless job of deceiving us. I don't believe we have any interest in avenging his death, but it's only right for us to repay our debts, and we certainly owe you one for swindling us. So come on, time for you to show your true colours and stop playing around. <sighs> well, if that's really what you want, there wasn't any point in holding back against you freaks anyway. You got your wish, I hereby acknowledge you as heretics. Let the hunt begin. Haha, -ha, that's it, that's exactly what I wanted! 
You look every bit the monster I'd hope you were, just like us. Don't you even think of holding back, kiddo. Not unless you want to end up splattered on the ground. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it at this point. By the time I walked through that door, my resolve was set. If I can't win here, I won't be able to face him. So I'm going to come at you with all I've got. There's no way in hell I'll lose. Joshua. My, my. We have a spectacular performance in store for us, don't we? You're telling me. I'm fired up just thinking about it. Then may the curtain rise. Let us begin a carnival for the ages. Illusory and infinite, spectacular and without end. I don't want to interrupt this music because it's amazing, but we have Blue Blanc, the Phantom Thief. He is the annoyer of the group. He likes to use area attacks, status ailments, and likes wasting your guard. He's also the fastest. Of them, I like to take him out first because he his status ailments really rack up and also uh, he likes to waste your earth guards. Volta is, as you would expect, the powerhouse of the trio. He mostly focuses on just hitting you really, really hard and he really likes to open the fight with his S-Craft, so be ready for that early. Luciola? She is the supporter, and she can revive the others when they go down. Now, you would normally think, Oh no, I have to take her out first. I personally don't think so, because her revives bring back with such pathetically low HP that you can very easily just knock them back down again. So, I want to save Luciola for last, though she does have an S-Craft too, and it's a fairly dangerous one. In fact, I think she actually has two of them. Now, I am not going to use... Actually, no, I can use Gaiash. No, I think I'll probably save Kevin for, um... Oh, Saint goes after Blue Blunt, which is a pain. Uh, Zodiac, I mean. Okay, no, I want to get Zodiac up early, I think. So the song that's playing now is an instrumental version of, uh, a vocal version of the Enforcer battle theme from Trails in the Sky SC. Uh, that was in one of the arranged albums. It's called Maybe It Was Fated. This is the instrumental version. And okay, Tita goes Orbal Gear. The reason why I wanted to avoid um, having Kevin do his Grail Sphere before she did this is that remember that when Tita goes into Orbal Gear, she wipes all of her buffs. So yeah. Oh great, Volta's first turn is a crit. That's uh, I'll probably be stealing that with Joshua. And after Kevin's done this, he is going to go straight for Earth Wall. Not Earth Wall, Rail Sphere. It's, it's the same thing, it's just a double version. Okay, now Josh. Oh, Josh was casting. Uh, yeah, I'll still do it. And we are showing the full animation for this because, of course, we are. So, yeah, if I put Earth Guard on Tita and then she went Orbital Gear, she would lose that. And I have had this fight go very badly from forgetting this in the past. Yeah, this part of the song, um, it has, like, part of the lyrics are Maybe it was fated in gratuitous English, so that's why the song's called what it is. Okay, do I just go all out on, um, Cyclone Napalming Blue Blanc, or do I first debuff everybody with Calamitous Blast? I would also very much like to debuff their speed, but I can do that with Kevin. And that is precisely why I used Earth Wall early. So, I'm pretty sure this guy is voiced by Keith Silverstein. Also, this is why we spread out, because this is only hitting Ren now. And uh, otherwise, it would have been hitting pretty much everyone. It's, it's got an area, it doesn't have a particularly huge area, unlike Cassius' S-Craft. But yeah, here's the value of spreading out in this battle. Okay, you are going to charge Blue Blanc. That's going to knock him back and prevent his areas from being annoying. It's going to heal a bit, though. I don't normally describe songs as bangers, it's kind of a uh, slang that was before my time, but I will in this case. And this is why, yeah, Blue Bike is annoying, because that hits through Earth Guard, and what being shrunk does is it actually reduces the area effect on your arts, which includes uh, Earth Wall. Although it probably doesn't include Gaia Shield, because Gaia Shield is um, uh, f full field hitting. Now, I may have actually screwed myself over by knocking Blue Blanc too far backwards. Okay, let's see. Can I Supreme Flicker him? I think they're all... Yeah, most of them are... Yeah, most strong bosses at this point are immune to delay. Should I just keep Calamitous Blasting, or should I... 
Hmm, actually, I have an idea. I can use, and I don't normally do this, but I can use Dark Matter EX to pull Blue Blanc closer to me. In fact, he's probably going to move, though, so maybe I could... Hmm, setting a trap may actually backfire on me. I'm going to play it safe. Aha! I'm glad I played it safe, because uh, he wouldn't have been in that otherwise. Yeah, Akashic Rain is the thing that really sucks with Blue Blanc, because that kind of hits everywhere and just gets rid of your shields. That's why Gaia Shield is great, especially when combined with the... Um, Time Gem, which lets you cast it basically instantly. And this is the revenge I was talking about Tita getting. Oh, actually, Blue Buck was just out of that. Crap. I thought we'd have to move at least a little closer. Because I wanted to put him into range of Tita so she could focus him down. Ah, uh, well, yeah, you just happen to be in a direct line. And yes, now Joshua has turned into, uh, to use yet another slang that was before my time, a big chonk. Uh, but I actually, like, I forget exactly what that does. I think it does lower your speed quite a lot. This is not what I was expecting Tate to be doing this battle, but she's just gonna go ahead and just smack Volta a lot. Okay, Perenkyu's arts. Don't hit Tita, please. I think he is hitting Tita. Okay, good, she's immune to that. Probably because they don't really have sprites of, um, of the Orbal Gear getting morphed, but still. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna pull you in a bit, and Kevin really ne- Ugh, no, I, I want Tita to get that crit turn. This is, I suppose, a slight problem with, um, the, uh, time gem is that it actually means that sometimes you go too soon. So in that case, I'm actually just gonna have Kevin heal himself. Because, yeah, I really, really want that crit turn on Tita. Yeah, it's actually possible that Volta may end up going down first, which is not what I would have expected. Okay, Joshua is casting, so I can't S-break with him, or that would ruin things. Seal. Yeah, like, as you can see, he loves status ailments, so I just really like to take him down as quickly as possible, because he gets really annoying otherwise. Having status immunity on Kevin is good, because uh, with his um, Sacred Breath, he can cure ailments. However, while he's under the effect of um, being shrunk, Sacred Breath has a lower area. Pretty sure Sacred Breath does cure um, Morph, though. It's called Morph, not like Mini. This isn't Final Fantasy, I think it is, that has Mini status. Uh, I, I guess I'll just guard Joshua right now. It's kind of funny that after all that boasting, Kevin is spending most of this fight small. Ah, uh, yeah, she can heal. That sucks. Oh, Josh. Joshua does have 200 CP, but he's sealed, so he can't use S-Craft. So, scratch that. I'm going to smack Blue Bunk in the face. Well, more like in, in the everything. Don't know exactly what part of the body Tita's charging Orbal Gear is hitting, but it's likely to be all of it. Uh, can I get a Calamitous Blast in? Yes, I can. Okay, good. You're going to go ahead and smack Falter. Yeah, like, again, while Luciola can heal, I find that it's not that hard to out-damage her healing, so I prefer not to directly go for... Okay, you are going to Curia Balm yourself. Okay, now, yeah. Now you can do it. Okay, Blue Bunk is getting close to being down. In fact, you, okay, she's definitely healing there. Uh, hmm. I haven't even tried using Enfeeble yet. I think I'll go for Enfeeble over there. However, as much as I don't like to use up Rem's turn, I'm going to do this, because this might actually finish Blue Blanc. Uh, it may not, though. I don't know if Rem's going to be doing this much damage. Can't hit, hit everyone here, unfortunately. Here's where I really wish that Tita had an S-Craft in Orbal Gear mode, because that would be amazing. Maybe one day, if the Orbal Gear is upgraded to, like, Mark II or even Mark III, she might have an S-Craft with it. Oh, he just barely survived. That really sucks. <laughs> and Kevin is going for Enfeeble, I think. If Kevin was going for an offensive spell here, then maybe uh, he would actually be down, because I just, I really do not like Blue Blanc in this fight. He's probably going to use Akashic Rain again, isn't he? He is! I thought so. 
Uh, okay, you know what, Joshua? Do this again. There he goes. Yeah, Blue Blanc is voiced by Kirk Thornton, I believe, and uh, he was originally voiced by Troy Baker in Sky SC, but they actually gave him his voice actor from Cold Steel because they liked his Cold Steel voice so much. This is a spoiler that Blue Blanc appears in Cold Steel, but... Okay, please tell me that's not... That hits everyone. Uh, am I actually dead here? Because that would really suck if I failed here this late into the fight. Okay. Yeah. Don't underestimate this fight, even this late in. Uh, and Kevin has, like, no movement, so I can't actually get to people with Zerum capsules at this point. Though I can use this. Uh... Okay, come on, Kevin, please get Grail. He's gonna get he's gonna get a full Grail Sphere, I think. There we go, okay. Okay, and now how far can Joshua Okay, he can go pretty far. Right. Uh I'm not really sure I'd fully recommend uh, I guess I can use tasty medicine instead of uh, other stuff. Because that's almost a full heal and win anyway. Oh, she's just... Oh, she's using this. Okay, so this is what I was saying before. She can revive the others, but she brings them back with such low health that it's pretty trivial to knock them back down again. Uh, I have a whole bunch of Zerum capsules. I may as well just Zerum teeter. Yeah, but I almost got complacent there. Uh, I forgot that Luciola's S-Craft hits everything. Okay, should she go for Calamitous Blast, or should she- No, I think I want to go for Calamitous Blast, because I don't know- I think Luciola's actually pretty close to being done. Oh, wow, she's- <laughs> She's, like, pretty much already done. So, I'm just gonna have to bring back Tita just so that- Oh, no, I did- I did bring back, back Tita already. Tita's unfortunately not gonna finish this fight in Orbital Gear mode, which is unfortunate. In fact, this'll actually end it. Pretty sure. Yep, they're both down. That was dicey for a moment. I am glad Kevin's arse defense is as good as it is, because if it wasn't, I would have been done there. So, yeah, do not underestimate that fight at all. Like, all three of them have S-Crafts. Blue Blunk has an S-Craft too, which he can use. I haven't seen him use it uh, in a while, but, uh, of attempting this, but... He does have one. Like, weirdly, I actually consider Volta the the least threatening of that group, because, like, he mostly just does, like, attacks that aren't a threat if you spread out. I mean, he hits hard, but he's surprisingly slow for what he's supposed to be. Like, he's supposed to be, like, a, you know, super agile martial artist. I'm never really going to use this, but I may as well. It's stronger than her other S-Breaks. And speaking of things I'll never use... So, the Enforcers here all have a chance of dropping uh, particular accessories and weapons. Basically, they all drop something that responds to, like, their rival within the party. So, Blue Blanc can drop uh, a really good gun for Olivier, and technically Josette, but yeah. Uh, and Luciola can drop a Sharer weapon. Oh, and another Tiger Heart! I'm pretty sure that was a drop from Volta. And Wind Gem. Okay, so yeah, so Blue Blanc's must have been the Long Barrel plus three. They have multiple drops, so there's actually no way to get all of them in one playthrough, but everything they do drop can be farmed from other enemies later on in the game, so don't despair if you don't get particular drops that they have. Ah, I underestimated you guys. Oh, I had a lovely time, personally. I almost wish it could have lasted a little- No, no, you- No, please, please no, because you would have wiped us if it lasted longer. I think we're fine with stopping here. Seriously? Really? I'm with Luciola. Regardless, you have defeated us, and with that, claim the right to challenge the fourth guardian. The first to be chosen by the Lord of Phantasma, and the last you shall face. Defeating him will be no easy task. But hey, you managed to give the three of us a real workout. Don't go screwing up now, or I'm gonna kill you. Volta being encouraging in his own special way. And yes, according to the Katakana, it is pronounced like a V, not a W. I'd rather avoid death at your fist, so count on it. 
Do you really have to go? It pains me to say yes, but we must. What about you? When will you be returning to Ouroboros? Hmm... You needn't feel rushed to find your way again. Take as long as you need. No one can restrict the actions of we enforcers. Not even the Anguis. Or the Grandmaster, actually. The Grandmaster gives everyone a surprising degree of freedom, uh, and that's led to a lot of speculation about what Ouroboros actually is and what their plans are, but that will be for a later video of this series. If you do become our enemy, I'll be looking forward to a hell of a fight with you again, in the Calvard Arc, like many, many years from now. And if you come back to us, I'm up for giving you some training if you want it. You'd be able to master my zero impact in no time flat. <laughs> wow, Ren with Taito, that's an interesting prospect. I'll give it some thought. Ah, it appears our time is up. For now, I bid you all farewell. Heh, <laughs> later. Oh, it's another warp circle. That is the one thing that Tita has said this entire time. I wish they'd given Tita dialogue in this fight. Right, on the other side of that circle awaits this area's final battle. You're sure you're ready for this, Joshua? As ready as I'll ever be. Don't hold back for my sake. We can step inside as soon as you guys want. Oh, and this music is still continuing. What I did want to do is actually show what all the drops were from uh, these people in the 6th plane. And yeah, look at this. Look at all the bosses in the 6th plane. There's only two left. So, Blue Blunt the Phantom Thief. Uh, yeah, he can drop Emergency Puppet. Yeah, uh, that, that Ein, Eine Kleine. I bet pronouncing that horribly wrong. Plus one is, is a gun. Luciola. Yeah, she dropped... Oh, it's not even a plus one, it's just the same Shara weapon you could get in the fifth plane. That kind of sucks. Um, kind of fitting that she's, given she's my least favorite enforcer of the Sky Arc. She can drop a Ruby Gem, though, which is cool. And Volta drops uh, Tiger Heart, Zerum Powder, Iron Arm. Iron Arms is a Zin weapon, I think. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Tiger Heart, like, I got the best possible drop out of him, so I'm not going to complain about that. In fact, this is a bit of a, a bit of a clash with this music, but, um... Yeah, you can stack these, <laughs> so that's a thing you can do. I want to go back and see if there's any conversations at the garden, because the next fight, which is the Schwarz Ritter, obviously, is going to be its own part, and... Okay, I'll, I'll mention that a bit later. Okay, you're just saying that. Like, again, I want to see if there are different conversations in the garden now that you've beaten the Enforcers. No, it looks like everyone's still in the same places. Okay, no, actually, there is different dialogue. My brothers are waiting for me to get home, so I'm not staying here a moment longer than I have to. We're heading back to our world. That's eh, great that she's, um, happier now. So you ran to Volta, huh? <sighs> I wonder what he's doing in the real world these days. Anyway, next up is the fourth and final guardian. Good luck out there, Joshua. Thank you. Oh, Ren doesn't have anything to new to say after fighting the Enforcers. I wanted to check if, uh, Joshua... if I... Yeah, there we go. It sounds like the Schwarz Ritter specifically wants me to come with you for whatever reason. I'm ready to go whatever you are, just let me know if, when you want to leave. So yeah, about that, uh, I haven't shown this before, but you cannot teleport anywhere in the Black Ark without Joshua, so you have to have him for the next boss fight. Next time, we'll be facing the Schwarz Ritter. But just like Cassius Bright's, there is an achievement for beating this guy on Nightmare, and so it's time to return to the Nightmare file I prepared earlier, where we'll be facing off against him, and after that, Chapter 6 ends and we'll move on to Chapter 7. Look forward to that, because Chapter 7 is when the plot really gets real. We're nearing the end of Phantasma, and the end of all of this, and the truth of what's going on. So, see you all next time.